Welcome to another Demarcation Media Mega Constructs review. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm sure the majority of you know Halo Infinite runs off of the coding system, for better or for worse, and for the most part for worse, but what the codings do is they take your Spartan and instead of allowing you to manipulate the minor details, you just apply a coding, your Spartan gets mass changed according to that coding, and you're good to go. Simple, easy, should be a really good system but a lot of things are locked to cores, a lot of armor pieces are locked to cores, and it just gets messy. However, Mega is not limited by that, and they have done a whole bunch of things, some of which are accurate to infinite, some of which are not, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through and take a look at all of the figures that appear to be at least emulating an in-game official coding. And we've got some that are very blatantly according to a coding, some that are kind of unofficially codings, and then there are some that's more like speculation. So we're just going to go through each one, take a look at it, compare it to its in-game counterpart, and see how it lines up. Before we get into it, I wanted to give a huge thank you to Multiversal Productions for his help with this video. All of the infinite screenshots were provided by him. He tracked down all the codings, all that stuff, because I don't have access to infinite um, as of right now. So huge thank you to him. I will put the link to his channel down in the description in the pinned comment. I will highly recommend you go and watch some of his videos. He does a bunch of different stop motions and stuff. You should definitely go check it out. So without any further ado, let's jump in and we're going to start with the cadet coatings. So the first of our cadet coating is cadet red. It's a red Spartan. It's pretty much that simple. Pulling up the in-game screenshot, we can see that it's pretty close. The in-game one obviously looks a bit different because it's got some wear and tear on it, as well as some extra detailing. This guy does not have the detailing on his chest or the detailing on his shoulders. It's just all plain. For the most part, the helmet figures, because this guy came from the Capture the Flag helmet, did not have a bunch of extra detailing, so you can see he's fairly plain in that regard. His helmet is very accurate. It's got all the detailing that you need. Silver visor, nothing around the back. But I would say that this is basically as close as you're going to get to Cadet Red. I don't believe Mega is going to really change their red, at least not their default, just normal red. Uh, I don't know that we're going to get anything different. So that's pretty much if you want a Cadet Red Spartan, this is the one to go for. And there are a bunch of different red pieces that you could pop and swap and make your Spartan look exactly how you want it to. Cadet Yellow is kind of interesting because we actually have more options for yellow. There's a couple different shades of yellow that Mega has done, but this is the only figure that they've done an all blanket yellow up and down. There was that Gungnir from the Blind Bag series that had the yellow helmet, uh, and that was kind of maybe a closer yellow to what we see here on the infinite screenshot. However, that came with like kind of a pale gray lower arms and lower legs. So this guy comes all yellow and I think that's the closest to cadet yellow because I, for the most part until we get later in the video, we're looking at these straight out of the sets. This comes from skull control helmet. He's got all yellow, uh, blue visor, which the visors are not a part of the coating. So you can change that how you want. Uh, detailing on the helmet, no detailing on the chest or the shoulders or anything else really because that's just, again, how the helmet figures were. But yeah, even though the yellow doesn't match fully, I would say that this is Mega's unofficial version of Cadet Yellow, purely because he comes entirely in yellow and we don't have other infinite figures that do that. Cadet Orange is a really easy one. This was included in two sets, the Marine Platoon Pack and the UNSC Combat Unit. Both figures are technically identical until you look and some of their accents are uh one is darker and one is brighter but this guy was actually featured heavily in or i should say the in-game version was featured heavily in the infinite promotional stuff 
and it's kind of a shame that you couldn't do this right off the bat. You have to get the Mark 7 helmet instead of it being default. But it's pretty much a dead ringer for the Cadet Orange coating in game. The only difference is that the Mega one is more saturated, a little bit more vibrant and in your face, whereas the in game one is a little bit more dulled down. But all the detail is here on the chest, on the shoulders, and the kind of thruster units out back, and on the helmet. Nothing around the actual back of the figure, but I would say that this is pretty much spot on. Um, again, a little more saturated than the in-game version as you can see, but I don't think we're gonna get anything closer anytime soon. Cadet Green is really interesting because the in-game Cadet Green is very like forest color, very much more matte than Mega's typical metallic green. And this figure that they introduced in the zone control helmet, this is Vesda, uses a brand new green that Mega has not used before and it matches pretty much perfectly, I would say. Obviously missing some things, missing the wear, missing detail on the chest. The shoulders are Halo 5 shoulders, which I don't believe are in infinite and the helmet is a Vesda, but this is pretty much spot on, I would say. Color wise, it's as accurate as we possibly can get without extra printing and it looks pretty nice and i really really hope to see this green used in more figures in the future so those are the four figures that i felt actually kind of were blatantly um trying to be the cadet coatings there are a couple others that we're going to talk about later in the video but for now i wanted to move on to the named character coatings so the first of these coatings is Midnight Griffin. This is the armor that you can get based on Spartan Griffin in the campaign. I can't tell you exactly where you find the coating in game, but this is essentially a dual purpose figure here because it is both Griffin himself, or you could just use this as your multiplayer Spartan if this happens to be your coating of choice. Um, accuracy wise, it's really hard to tell. Griffin's coating in game, you can see it's like partially dark blue, partially like sand blue. There's so many varying shades. The light hits it different. It's so hard to say. Mega got the kind of asymmetrical look. Uh, yeah, I can't really speak to the accuracy here too much just because of how Griffin's coating is so hard to tell. But yeah, this is, this is the Mega version. So if this is the coating that you use in game, this is the Spartan for you. This guy comes in the Banished Phantom. Our next coating is Obelisk Stone. This is the Spartan Stone coating based on Spartan Benita Stone from the campaign. And this one is pretty easy to tell accuracy wise. I mean, there's a little bit of that weird color, what am I looking at sort of thing, like the lower legs. I can't really tell the lower legs colors because the light makes it look different. But the Mega version is pretty darn accurate, I would say, um, as accurate as we could possibly ask for, in my opinion. Very nice printing on the head, on the chest, on the shoulders too, actually, and on one of the thigh armors, as well as the back. Um, there actually does exist a Mark VII helmet in this color with this print have no idea how i would ever get my hands on it but hey mega if you guys ever want to send a prototype my way send me that helmet i would love to see that in person but yeah that's that's a pretty cool coating if you use this in game this is definitely a spartan you're going to want to track down unfortunately she's kind of hard to get at the moment because that scorpion has disappeared from existence so that's kind of a bummer now, the last of our named character coatings is Wild Coven. Now, this coating itself is very accurate to the game. Tons of print all over. Mega went all out for this one. Literally, almost every surface of this has that camo print. Coloring, perfect. It all looks perfect, except for the one fact that that is a Gungnir helmet and not a Stormfall helmet. Or I should say, it is a Stormfall helmet because Gungnir is Stormfall, it's just with the Gungnir attachment removed. That helmet piece isn't coming until the multiplayer Mayhem set comes out, and Mega hadn't had that at the time, which means that this is not at all accurate to the actual like in-game character. But I think that this looks cooler, and it looks more like just a multiplayer Spartan here, and not like the named character, so I'm actually all for this. 
Very cool figure. This is a Series 17 figure. I will warn you, if you are trying to track this figure down, be very careful because there are a lot of fakes out there and it's it's not good if you get a fake. They're smaller, they're crappier, and the print tends to just bleed all over the undersuit. But I do highly recommend this figure. Super fantastic. Even if you're not using this coating in-game or you're not a fan of the character or whatever, it's just a really good looking Spartan. Now we're launching into the kind of standard coatings, I guess, the ones that you can unlock or purchase or whatever, the ones that are not the defaults and the ones that are not based on actual characters. And I actually almost didn't include this one. This is the um, Series 17 Yoroi, and I was not gonna include it because like, I don't know, it just didn't seem like it was based on a coating, but it is. It is the Imperial Court coating, which is kind of the default for the Yoroi. All the like, art for the Yoroi started off using this, and it's, I mean, Mega made it based on the coating, so it's fairly accurate. We got the red and the gold, extra detailing, and it's a Halo Heroes figure, so very few um, expenses were spared for this one. New parts all over. It's just a pretty nice looking figure. My only gripe with it, it really has nothing to do with the coating and the way they executed it. It's just the fact that they chose such a funky, funky red for this Spartan. Like the head and arms are somewhat translucent as a result, and I don't really love that. But yeah, this is essentially just a coating. They made this based on the Imperial Court coating, and they did a pretty good job. Originally, I was going to count this as Cadet Blue. However, in-game Cadet Blue is far more matte. You can kind of see this right here. I'll pop it up on screen. It's more matte. It doesn't have that metallic catch that this mega figure does. Now, this was in the Halo Infinite Series 1 blind bags. So I was like a little bit at a loss how this guy fit in. He really felt like he was emulating a coating, but I didn't know which one. And then the Covenant Frontline coating released. And I would say this is what we're gonna assume that this one's supposed to be. I don't know that Mega would have known that Covenant Frontline was coming, but the metallic blue is pretty close. The only difference is that Covenant Frontline has some darker blue accents, and the only darker blue that this guy has is the accidental color shift between the softer plastics and the harder plastics. But yeah, he's got the metallic, and I would say that this is a pretty close um, representation of Covenant Frontline. So if you use the Covenant Frontline coating, you can use this figure to represent your Spartan. And there's a lot of blue pieces, so you can pop and swap to your heart's content and make your perfect Spartan. This one's actually kind of funny. So this is a coating based on a Mega Constructs figure. So then Mega made a figure based on the coating that was based on the figure. This is Action Block. This comes in the Halo Infinite Series 5 blind bags, and it is basically Mega recreating the Faithful versus Fallen Spartans. Um, interestingly enough, they chose to use this newer metallic blue to represent that color, which is a couple shades darker than the original Faithful versus Fallen, and therefore a little bit darker than the in-game coating as well. However, it's instantly recognizable with that pairing of light blue and silver, and I think it's just kind of funny, funny that we have like a, uh, a coding section uh, where it's like what what is it? I don't know it's just funny to me that Mega made a figure based on a coding that was based on one of their figures but it's a pretty cool thing to have and if you happen to have the action block coding in game then getting this figure is a really nice kind of uh, way to have your Spartan in real life uh, or you could just get the faithful versus fallen Spartans and then it would be really accurate however I don't know if the action block coding goes to other cores somebody who plays infinite can let me know in the comments but it might be locked to the mark 7 core i'm not totally sure so the old faithful versus fallen were just all reach spartans and if it's locked to mark 7 then that's not entirely accurate this next spartan comes from the banished skiff he's just all in this metallic green and this was the one that i was originally thinking might be cadet green however like I said before, Cadet Green is way more matte and not this metallic. But there is a coating called Platinum Anniversary that is a dead ringer for this one. Basically, it's, I mean, it's just metallic green. You can see here, it's got all the details. This figure matches almost exactly. Um, in game, obviously the lighting changes and it can be more reflective and less reflective, but this is basically Platinum Anniversary. I don't know if Mega knew that Platinum Anniversary was gonna be a thing, or not, but 
that's what it looks like to me. Our next coating is stone green, and this one's obviously Mega was aiming to make this one. I mean, there's really no way around it. It's all pale green with the white helmet on top. There, it's Yeah, it's just stone green. This comes in the Bizarre Battleground set, and you kind of get a couple options to customize this according to the color scheme. You can make it a Mark VII, you can make it an Anubis, you can change the chest plate around, that sort of thing. I have it in Anubis because I think it looks cool, and my Mark VII helmet came very poorly printed. So this is what I'm using. I don't know how accurate it is to have those shoulders on there, but it looks really good to me. Mega did a spot on job. I mean, obviously the little gray details around the chest and stuff are missing, but you can see in game is pretty darn close. Um, the light makes it look a little more washed out, but yeah. Mega did this one justice and I really love it. I wasn't sold on the whole white and green thing at first, but I actually really like this now. Ah, uh, Scorpion Punch. So Mega has done two variations of Scorpion Punch and neither of them are entirely accurate. So what Scorpion Punch is, and you can see the in-game render right here, but what you can't see is that there's a red stripe on top of the helmet. Neither of the Mega figures have that. And also the red is kind of um, contested for what color it is. Originally, Mega did this guy over here, this Mark VII. They gave him an all red head and an all red arm. And, you know, it was fine. And then they introduced this Anubis in the Mongoose Outriders set with an orange arm and no red head, but no red stripe on the helmet either. And Mega said that actually the arm in game is orange and the original one was based on concept art. Kind of odd but I can kind of see where they're coming from. It definitely looks like an in-between of the red and the orange. I do think probably this guy is a little bit more accurate because he doesn't have as much red on his head or he doesn't have any red. He really needed the stripe or it would have been orange. But yeah, it, both of them are kind of like close but not quite, but it's obviously supposed to be that coating. I mean, it, there's really no way around it. The Mark VII was from series 12 and as I said, the Anubis was from Mongoose Outriders, which is pretty cool. Halo Heroes Series 16 brought us the HCS Winter Coating. Now, Mega went all out for this guy. Every little bit of detail was captured, or at least they tried to capture it as best as they could. And this is the first figure that has a coating that actually matches the um, set up there. I believe that's also HCS winter coating and you can see here's the in-game picture Pepsi man all in red and white and blue and Mega's version is instantly recognizable if you use this coating in game Highly recommend you track this guy down. You will not find a better action figure representation of your Spartan um, outside of this figure like it's really good the only downside I would say is that he's pretty tough to find and there are a handful of quality control errors in terms of the print that you can run across. But for the most part, really cool. And Mega's kind of beginning to dive more and more into these highly detailed coatings and trying to get as accurate as possible. And I am all for it. Our last official coating is the Peppermint Laughter coating. This came in the Winter Contingency event. I believe it was free. And again, Mega just kind of went all out for it, did a really good job, instantly recognizable, all the details are there. He's got the red visor, which I don't think that was the default for that season, but I'm not totally sure. But you can see in-game coding, that's what it looks like with the red visor too. Red visor is very bright in-game. The uh, Mega one is a bit darker, which I honestly, I prefer that. But yeah, this one's really cool. And again, it was Mega continuing their dive and going even further into just kind of seeing how far they can take these coatings. The AR also has a Peppermint Laughter coating as well, which is pretty slick. And I really like how this turned out. It's just showing that Mega can do really complicated coatings and do them well. Pretty much perfect. I don't really find any gripes with it. Obviously, sometimes you can get misprinted visors and whatnot, but it's pretty nice. I would say full 10 out of 10 in terms of like accuracy. Now we are moving into the speculation zone. This is like maybe Mega was going for this. Maybe they weren't going for this. I don't really know. But we're starting off with the Sundered Star coating. Basically, this is the only 
silver Uroi coating. It's missing a lot of details. It's missing like the, the gold that it has on there, but there's no other silver Uroi coating. So this is basically the closest we have to Sundered Star. And if it's not supposed to be Sundered Star, then there's no, there's no just blank silver for Uroi. So yeah, that's basically close enough. The missing details are a bit of an eyesore, so I don't know how close we can call this, but yeah, again, this is the speculation zone. This guy comes in the Mongoose Outriders set. So this is kind of the closest we have to Cadet Pink. The colors are really way off. You don't really have that dark of a pink in Infinite, aside from the bubblegum color. The, uh, was it just called bubblegum? Anyway, that was kind of the closest we had gotten was the bubblegum. But I don't know, this doesn't quite feel like that. I guess it could be the bubblegum coating, but also it could be cadet pink. So don't really know. They could have been aiming for either. You can see the in-game one so much lighter. So not entirely sure. This could be cadet pink or it could be bubblegum or it could be none of the coatings. But if you need a cadet pink stand in, this is the Spartan to go for. And this comes in the zone control helmet. This next figure is a case of almost there but not quite so the sage advice coating is a very bright lime color you can see it right here very bright almost eye burning and then this figure is so close the only thing it's missing is the bright green for the lower arms and the lower legs so i would say that if you wanted to do a quick pop and swap you could easily have a sage advice spartan i do like the color mix up so maybe mega just decided to kind of riff off of that coating or they just didn't know that that was a thing and decided to just go with lime i don't know but if you wanted a sage advice spartan all you got to do is do some quick pop and swaps and there's plenty of other lime green spartans to choose from i almost included this guy in the main list because it's so close but it was just missing enough details to make me go hmm maybe this is just speculation so this would be the noble principal coating now you can see the in-game one it's pretty darn close the only thing is the chest plate has way more gray than the actual one the actual figure but yeah i mean it's it's basically there it's got the blue and the gray the balancing is there so it's pretty close i would say that this is like 99 percent there which is why i almost put it in the main list I would say, yeah, if you use the Noble Principle coding in game, this is a Spartan for you to track down. This was the Halo Infinite Series 3 blind bags, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think it was Series 3. But yeah, he's not a very hard to get figure as far as I can tell. And he looks really good. Yeah, pretty much Noble Principle. When the Bizarre Battlegrounds set first came out, there was some debate about if this was supposed to be a coating or not. There was a handful that were debated on, but from my looking around and looking at different coatings, this it most closely resembles the Scorpion Horvath coating. It's missing some details. Yeah, the tan is not exact, but it's the closest I think we'll get. Um, you can kind of pop and swap this. You get multiple options to configure your Spartan with this coating in the set. Um, and yeah, I, I would say this is the closest we'll get. There's obviously some other tan coatings that you could argue uh, maybe Mega was going for here. And heck, maybe they were going for all of them? You know, they were just like, hey, there's all these different tan coatings, let's roll them all into one figure and then this was what we got. But yeah, this is essentially the closest we get. I do hope we get a uh, Spartan Horvath eventually, like a Halo Heroes figure. But for now, this is the closest we've got. Our last little section here is uh, custom. So obviously Mega has a huge pop and swap potential. You can easily just swap pieces around, do whatever you want. But I just wanted to bring in a couple of coatings that I knew how to make super easily. This is the Northwest Sky. All you need is one of those blue Spartans and then yellow lower legs and yellow forearms and you have Northwest Sky. You're missing the detailing of the yellow on the helmet and you could choose to use a yellow helmet but I chose to go with a blue helmet because there was more blue on the helmet and it looked more accurate to have blue that way. But yeah, that's a super, super easy one to do. And then the next custom that I wanted to 
uh, kind of showcase here. This is Primal Glory, and this little mix here was taught to me by Multiversal Productions. I actually ended up going and buying some figures to be able to make it just because it looked so good. Ignore the yellowing on the shoulders. I accidentally left the figure that I used, the the trailblazer that I used the parts from, out on the windowsill. I probably should try and fix that, but yeah, this was really clever. I really like the balancing here. It really shouldn't work, but it does, and it's pretty much instantly recognizable as Primal Glory. Um, I think it's a really nice mix. You kind of have to get a lot of figures, so the head and the lower legs comes from the garrison pack um spartan the arms and the lower arms or like the shoulders and the lower arms come from the um halo heroes series 13 trailblazer and then the leg armor comes from this guy right here and then the chest comes from the other or that comes from the spartan in the escape helmet the red one so if you want to make this for yourself you need to track down all of those figures and it's pretty worth it i would say it looks really nice very recognizable as a halo infinite coating and if you use this in game this is the one that you're going to need to pop and swap well there you have it that is every single multiplayer coating that i could find in mega constructs form including a few custom ones so if I missed any, or if you think that some of my choices were wrong, or if you would have labeled them differently, let me know down in the comments. I'm curious to see what you guys think, um, especially those of you who play Infinite on a regular basis and you know, you're messing with these coatings. Um, yeah, and like I said, if, you, if I missed any, if you think that there's a figure that represents a coating that I didn't talk about here, let me know. Again, huge thank you to Multiversal Productions for his help with all of these. And oh yeah, before we, end the video i just wanted to give a quick little mention to the multiplayer mayhem coatings neon superfly and um estate gold those ones are not out yet so i didn't really want to focus on them but they are multiplayer coatings that we will be getting in the future so yeah like i said if i missed anything if you have different opinions let me know down in the comments i look forward to hearing what you guys think Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.